What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. It's been a long time. I have missed you guys, and uh, I'd like to hope that you've missed me as well. Uh, but one way or the other, I am excited to be back. Got a very special episode today as we get started again, and uh, I guess we'll call this Crossroads Rebuild Classic Edition uh, because for the first time ever, we're going to be working on a classic car, and I am so excited to be doing that. I've never worked on a classic car before, but I've always thought they were really, really cool, and uh, I'm excited to dive into this one. And it's not a car that I bought just because I wanted to buy a classic car. In fact, I didn't buy this car at all. Uh, this one's got a really cool story and a family connection. So let me show you around the car, tell you its story, and then we're gonna get right into it. And when I say we're, I mean, Doug is here. You know Doug, you remember Doug, he's gonna be helping me a little bit today. And we're gonna see if we can get this old girl started again. So let me go ahead and flip this thing around, show you what we're working with, and tell you a little bit about its history. All right, and here she is in all her glory. This is a 55 Chevy 210 Coupe. Now I, again, I'm admitting right up front, I am not an expert on these old classic cars. Uh, but I gotta say, I love the style of these old things. Now the 210 would have sat right in the middle of the uh, trim range on the old uh, 55 coupes. And uh, this one has some nice features, uh, but it's fairly basic as you'll see as we go around. Now, what I think is uh, really the most special part of this car is actually its story. This is actually a family car. This car belongs to my brother and sister-in-law uh, who live in South Carolina. And this car has been in my sister-in-law's family since it was brand new. Uh, this car was purchased by her grandfather in 55. And of course they lived in South Carolina. So it's been a South Carolina car its entire life. So her grandfather bought this in 55 and drove it for a number of years. And then her father drove it for a number of years as well. Uh, in fact, he drove it to high school uh, there in Greer, South Carolina. There's still uh, stickers on the window here uh, from when he was in high school and he used it uh, as a teenager, uh, driving around, learning to drive. Um, and then his father passed away, my sister-in-law's father or grandfather passed away in, I believe, 1982. Um, the last registration for the car was in 82. In fact, the registration sticker is still in the window from 82, 83. And that is the last time that this car has been on the road. When her grandfather passed away, her father, uh, being sentimental, um, parked it in his garage. Thankfully, it was in a garage, not outside. Uh, but he parked it in his garage uh, to preserve it. Um, but uh, it, didn't, it, it never really went out on the road again after that. He would go out periodically and start it up to make sure it still started and ran, um, but it, it, it never was registered. It never was put back on the road after that, which in a lot of ways is a shame. Um, but on the other hand, it actually helped preserve this car to a large degree. Let's continue our walk around uh, tour of the car. So she's got a lot of patina on her, as you can see. Um, probably a lot of that uh, was actually from its time in the garage with covers on it and with things sitting on it and being placed on it. Um, but she doesn't have uh, really any rust. Now, if this car had lived its, uh, lived its life here uh, in the Midwest in Indiana, this thing would be gone. It'd be rotten. Uh, but she didn't. She lived in South Carolina. And here, let me back that out so we can see a little bit better here. Uh, and so she really has very, very little rust. In fact, right here on the bottom of this bumper pad, this is really the only rust to speak of. Uh, and these things are open here in the back, so they're notorious for uh, dirt and leaves and stuff falling in there and then uh, can rot out the bottom. And that can happen anywhere. Uh, but thankfully, it wasn't here in the Midwest or somewhere else where they use a lot of salt. And so uh, she's not rotten underneath. It's going to be hard for me to show you that uh, right now. Uh, but take my word for it, and you will get to see that later on. Now, this car is just a single tone. Uh, it used to be a baby blue, and uh, she's pretty faded now. Uh, but don't worry, we'll take care of all of that. But see, it was just a single tone. She wasn't a Bel Air or anything like that with a two-tone paint. Now, the paint hasn't held up great over the course of years. This old uh, single-stage original paint, um, it, it, it's showing its signs of wear. You can see where people had their arms out the window. No doubt, some sun fading from being in South Carolina here on the roof. Uh, but in general, the body has held up well. A few bruises here and there, a few little dents and dings, nothing significant. And she is uh, very, very solid. Let's go ahead and take a look inside real quick. All right, here on the inside, first of all, can I just take a second to admire the way these doors close? Old 55, what is a 70 year old car almost? And the doors just operate 
better than anything else I own, to be honest with you. Uh, unbelievable, the build quality on these old things. Now, as you can see, uh, the seats are a little wore out, especially the captain's chair here. Um, back seat, also seeing some signs of some sun damage back there. So it's gonna need a little repair here on the interior. Uh, but door panels, door cards here, and floor in excellent condition. Needs a little cleanup, but uh, really in solid shape. Windows still work. Gotta love these old pop-ups and wind-up uh, wind windows. And then here on the inside, man, that beautiful classic interior. I love, uh, what would you call this, an art deco design? I don't know, but super cool from this classic era. And look at this, 55, and that headliner, while dirty, it is not drooping at all. So that's impressive to me as well. All right, so looking around here at the front, let's take a moment and look under, well, if this was Vice Grip Garage, we'd call this the power barn, but let's look up, up, up under the hood here and uh, take a look at what we're dealing with. If I can find a little popper. <laughs> Six and a half hours later. She binds a little bit when you open, but the old hinges still hold. All right, well, what we're looking at here was the base engine. This is a 235 cubic inch a straight six. As you can see, well, she's had a valve cover leak for a while, but it's all here, it's all honest, and can we just admire how much space there is inside the engine compartment of these old things? I can tell you, modern cars, I can hardly get my arms in there. So I think it'll be nice to work with something with so much space. Um, haven't messed with it yet. Hopefully she still turns uh, freely. And uh, that is our goal today to go ahead and get this thing uh, turned over and uh, Lord willing even started, that'd be great. Now, like I told you, it has not been started in a while. He used to go out and start it, uh, from what I understand, maybe every few months, make sure she's still started. Uh, but from what I'm told, he did that until uh, the gas tank rusted out. I guess that's one other thing that's rusty on this car was the gas tank. Not surprising on an old car like this. But uh, once it was no longer able to hold fuel, he wasn't able to start it. And they estimated uh, that it had been somewhere between five and seven years since he had started it. Um, now, that was last year when I picked it up uh, from South Carolina and brought it back here. Um, so it's been another year since then. So, you know, it could be anywhere in the six, eight, nine year range since it's been started. Although there's a battery here uh, with a sticker that says nine of 19. So I'm not sure hundred percent on that, uh, but um, you know, in any case, it hasn't been started in a while. All right, so what's the plan with this thing? Well, like I said, first start before we get into anything else is just to see, can she run still? Um, gonna need to rig some things up just a little bit since um, we don't have a working fuel system. Um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and dive in and see if we can make her run. Then long story short, we are gonna get her drivable again. At the end of the video, I'll talk a little bit more about the plans, but for now, let's go ahead and jump in, take a closer look at this motor and see if Doug and I can get her running again. All right, as we get started in here trying to see if she'll run, uh, we wanna make sure, of course, it's got oil in it, so we'll check that here in a minute. And uh, I've already checked this, but uh, the throttle is still free, uh, so that's good news. Um, don't know the condition of the, uh, uh, of the carburetor, and to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of experience working on carbs, so that'll be fun to work with and learn. Uh, but we'll learn along the way. There'll probably be a lot of things I'm going to have to learn along the way on this. Um, you can see it looks like the fuel pump has probably been replaced at some point. It looks a lot shinier than most of this. Um, no idea what the condition of the uh, ignition system is. Uh, but we're going to start by checking the fuel. Excuse me, checking the oil. And then um, we'll work our way around, make sure everything looks like it's in order. And uh, try to turn it over by hand. And then um, we'll put the battery to it. Now, I already hooked up the battery just to see if there's any power on it. And I got a generator light in the dash. So we've got at least a little power. Don't know if it's enough to turn it over or not, but we'll find that out here shortly. That's impressive though. Uh, but in any case, let's go ahead and uh, get started right away. I'm gonna put you guys in a little bit of a time lapse and we'll update you as we go. All right, so you've got oil. I mean, it's not clean oil, but it's filled to the fold point. So that's good news. Yeah. 
Oh, actually, you know what? There's some acorns in there. Acorns down in there. Let me see if I can find the needle nose. See if she'll spin. All right. All right. Well, that's a rotation. That's good news. That's good. Well, I'm gonna see if we can bump that thing and see if it'll uh, see if, it, if it'll do it with a key. It didn't do a forward or backward to run over us, so right. <laughs> now we know it's out of gear. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if she'll spin over on her own. I should try. She shouldn't start. But this is stuck open, too. Why is that stuck open? Should we get a little fuel and try this? Okay, All right, guys. Well, we were able to uh, prove that she spins over. Did it one full rotation by hand manually, uh, and it felt good. Um, she does turn over with the starter, albeit fairly slowly. Uh, so we may have to put the jump box on that battery because who knows how? Well, it probably hasn't been, hasn't been charged in eons. But I also forgot to bring fuel, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a little start or attempt to start it with starting fluid and see if we can get that to happen. If it can, we'll go get a little bit of actual fuel and see if we can get it to run a little bit on that. So, um, Doug? Let me get inside. Yeah, you wanna get in there and crank her? Just oh, make sure that thing doesn't light your eyebrows on fire. All right. Hold on a second, what is it doing? That would not be a, don't, don't pull a Jay Leno. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> too soon, sir, too soon. <laughs> Hold on, don't do anything. Huh? The key? Uh, may have done. I didn't mean to. Let's see. Yep. Here you go. All right. Give me a second. Right. I don't know how much it needs, so go ahead and give that a shot and see what happens. have to pull some plugs and check to see if she's even making spark. Vacuum. <laughs> oh, duh. <laughs> I, 
It might be one of the windshield wiper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, this thing's got cool in it. That's funny, dude. Oh, Looks like she's still got some right there. <laughs> Wow. And guys, just like that, all she needed was a little extra help on the battery, thanks to the jump pack, and some starting fluid, and she fired up like she was started yesterday. That is incredible. Uh, I am super impressed, and uh, also, also very, very thankful that it started so easily. Wow, what a champ. All right, and just like that, we're back. Got a piece of fuel line. Uh, so that we can uh, tie into this fuel pump here. And we're gonna cut that off and uh, go ahead and put on some soft line uh, so we can put it into a fuel tank and try to rig up a uh, fuel system here and try to run it that way since we can't use the tank. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and uh, we'll see how she runs on uh, fuel from its own pump. All right, we have it rigged up here and Doug is uh, tightening our piece of fuel line onto the fuel pump. Uh, and we've got an inline filter right there, and then that runs up through to our can here. And that is our goal here, is to be able to uh, see if we can run this thing off its own pump and off the fuel system, and the fuel filter will allow us to be able to see uh, how it's working. So, uh, we're gonna give it a shot. Wish us luck. hit it a couple times to make it keep keep doing It's not pulling any fuel. I think it's uh, saying wait. Oh, is it wait? It needs to. What if we? Uh, what if we take that back off and siphon a little bit in to get it started, and then uh, then we'll know we're at least getting fuel to the pump, and that might help it to wake up. Hopefully we won't have any sparks or anything. That would be good. <laughs> All right. Attempt, whatever this is, two or three, ten, whatever. Let's try it without the battery pack. Let's see what it does. Hey. That's bad fuel. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad fuel, but it tastes bad. Ah. Ready? Yeah.
think it's I don't think it's pulling any fuel. All right, well, let's rig this up a different way then. Well, oh yeah, we're gonna need that again, aren't we? Yeah. Fluid or? Uh, well, as much as I just dumped in there, it shouldn't need fluid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Only that battery has much left in it. Fuel pump is. Fuel pump's not pumping? Not pumping. That's a shame. Well, this might be where we have to call, call it for today. Yeah. All right, guys, this is where we're going to have to call it for tonight. Uh, for starters, um, haha, no pun intended. For starters, our pump does not seem to be pumping. Got fuel rigged up to it, even primed it. Uh, tried running it off of carb or um, starting fluid, tried running it off of fuel poured directly in the carb and we can get it to pop off but it does not appear that that thing is pumping at all so we're gonna have to look into either a replacement fuel pump or a rebuild kit or whatever they might have for that need to get my battery charged up a little bit i'm gonna take that home throw it on the charger see if we can get a little more life into that turns it over very very slowly might have to replace it but we'll see uh and then to top it all off as we were working we broke a few uh cooling line right here uh, appears to go to the heater core, so I'm um, going to have to get that fixed or placed uh, before we get too far into this. Although, I guess the good news is it's still pumping, so our water pump is probably good. But with that being said, uh, that does kind of put us at an end today. Although, proof of concept, she does run. Uh, also, going to probably need to look into some sort of a rebuild kit for this carburetor, clean it up. Um, probably could find a replacement for it. Uh, but um, be nice to keep things authentic. Uh, as much as possible, the family does want to keep uh, the car as original as possible. All right, so what's next? Well, as I just mentioned, need to figure out the fuel pump, need to figure out the carburetor, and fix the coolant uh, leak there. Uh, and I think that will be enough to get the car running uh, on its own. Um, ultimately, need to replace that fuel tank as well um, so that it can hold fuel and just pump off its own system. Uh, we have to worry about rigging something up so we're gonna have to look into doing that sooner and later as well um, and that should be enough to get the car running running uh, beyond that i uh, don't know exactly the condition of the transmission it's got a three on the tree manual transmission which is cool um but uh you know the the clutch is pretty soft but it does work um so i don't know if that's just how they were or if it needs any kind of a rebuild um, then I uh, need to look into the brake situation. Now on the short term, I need to get them working. Um, they, they really just don't. Getting it off the trailer was a little sketchy because uh, the brakes are just no good. Um, so at the very least, they need to be rebuilt. Um, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to doing uh, some sort of an upgrade on them, maybe a disc conversion or something so the car has better brakes because, of course, this has 50s drums all the way around. They weren't great brakes even when they were new. <laughs> Uh, so, but that's a long-term thing. At the very least, need to get it um, at least able to stop on its own so we can actually take this thing for a drive and try to get it running. Now, once those things are taken care of and the car can run and drive on its own, the next step is the actual restoration. So what is the plan for this car? Well, the plan for this car is relatively simple. You know, when I was talking to my brother and sister-in-law and asking them, what do you want to do with this? Are we doing a uh, show car or a restoration, which, you know, I'm not really qualified to do. Uh, are we doing a, a, just a daily driver restoration? Are we just getting it running and driving? Uh, how far are we going with this? Resto mod? Uh-huh. Uh, any kind of upgrades, anything like that. You can add air conditioning and Bluetooth and you know, all sorts of things that you can add and still make it look classic, but be a little more modern and functional. Um, and the, uh, the end result is they want to keep it faithful to what it was. Uh, my sister-in-law's name is Abby, and she said, I want it to be how granddaddy bought it. So um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make the car a daily driver restoration, uh, which means probably not going to do a frame off. Um, don't plan to anyway. Shouldn't need to. 
Um, but we will do everything mechanical, make sure everything works properly, um, fixing leaks, upgrading what needs to be upgraded, but nothing more than that, and keep it as original as possible. That's why I said something about uh, rebuilding this carburetor, even though it's a 70-year-old carburetor, um, you know, it's, it's, it's old, but it's the original. So it'd be great if we could rebuild it, keep it original. Um, although there may be some upgrades where necessary, uh, that's the plan. Eventually the car will get paint. Uh, it'll get, um, the chrome cleaned up, replaced if necessary, but again, wanting to keep as much of the originality as possible, repairing the interior, uh, and generally making it a nice daily driver quality, faithful restoration to the original. So it'll look like how granddaddy bought it. So with that being said, there's lots of work still to do, and it's going to take a while to get there. Uh, so don't expect this car to be a couple of episodes and done. Um, this is the first episode of Crossroads Rebuild Classic Edition. And um, I will hopefully be able to fit in some of my normal uh, car rebuilds along the way as well. And we'll do this car as time uh, and finances allow us to get to it. I'm doing the work, uh, but my brother and sister-in-law are paying for the parts. Uh, and obviously, as we get deeper into this, uh, some of that's going to start adding up. So it may take us a little while to get this done, uh, but we'll bring you along for the process and keep you updated uh, as we make progress on the car. So stay tuned for an episode coming soon on getting the fuel system um, working and ultimately working toward getting the car drivable so we can maybe take it on its first drive in 40 years. This car has been off the road as long as I have been alive, which is amazing to me. But I am super stoked at how quickly and easily she fired up today. Sorry for the dogs in the background there. Uh, she par she barked off just like she's you know was run yesterday, uh, and that is super exciting. That bodes very, very well for this car uh, and its future. As far as Crossroads Rebuild goes, stay tuned for more. Um, my life has been hectic and busy lately, and unfortunately that means I just haven't been able to devote as much time to YouTube as I'd like. So I will have new episodes coming on this and some other projects along the way, some projects you've seen, some projects you haven't, and I'll keep you updated along the way. Uh, that means the, the videos may be inconsistent, and that's okay. I hope you'll still look forward to them uh, as they come, and I will bring them to you uh, as quickly as I'm able to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop some comments down below and tell me what you think of uh, this first classic car that I'm working on. Um, drop a thumbs up for Doug coming out to help. Uh, he is the, uh, the, the greatest for, uh, for being willing to give his time uh, to come out here and help me. I really appreciate him. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.